Hello everybody, and welcome to my gameplay of Neo Scavenger. A very interesting game that I found on Steam a couple days ago. It just quickly became one of my uh, favorite games I've ever played. So let's go ahead and start this up. Alright, so the first thing you're going to come to is a list of abilities you can choose from and a list of flaws you can choose from. Now you might be thinking, hey, why should I choose flaws? Well, here's why. You see these little tick marks here? These tick marks um, count how many points you can use and you have 15 points so you can only use so many of these until your points run out so say I already clicked these four I got one point left then I click mechanic and then I have negative two points left. well to counteract that you can pick a skill to give you negative or uh, to give you points pretty much so like this is going to give me two points and now I can actually play the game because I have an equal amount of skill but let's just say starting off uh, you really want to have botany. I mean, you don't have to, but it helps because it makes it a lot easier to find food. It tells you what's poisonous and what's not. I'll take ranged. And um, let's see what else. I'll take tough because tough uh, really helps you as far as pain tolerance in your immune system goes. And it's really aggravating getting sick and dying from hunger, starvation, or some type of disease that you got. Let's see what else. No, I'll take hacking this time. I have, I have not taken hacking yet. I'll take that. And then, I'll take electrician. And we'll start the game. All right. So another cool thing about this is it, it's a really good story as well as an awesome survival game. But you'll see that in a second. You wake up disoriented, slumped over the base of an empty cryo sleep pod. Uh, your soaking cryo fluid, thick dust from the floor, clings to your skin, leaving a clean spot on the ground where a large zero five is painted. Across the room, there's an open door to the hallway and a broken window leading outside. Just as you gather your wits, an unearthly scream erupts from down the hall beyond the doorway. Something is coming. Fast. Alright, now on the left side of the screen, these are things that you can do within this uh, encounter that you're in at the moment. Think of it like a D&D &D encounter if you ever play D&D. &D. Now, you have electrician, you go to the door to stay shut, hacking, hack the door to stay shut, botany, which is, I'll do that one, it's really weird, or you can jump out the window. Now, I use botany. And a plant catches your eye as you scan the room for supplies. Brickiness, blah 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 blah. Castor oil plant is growing in from the window. You remember that this plant can be highly toxic and most animals will avoid it if possible. Breaking off some branches, you quickly stomp on the leaves and seeds, rubbing the fragments on your feet and hands. You scatter the rest in the doorway, just in time. The predatory dog-like creature comes to halt as it reaches the doorway, sniffling the plant and shaking its head in disgust. You thrust your hands toward it and step back further obviously uninterested in your toxic scent. With one more huff, it pads down the hall, looking for more palatable prey. Thank God, that thing looked like it would kill it. Now, when you wake up, you don't really know who you are, so I'm going to search this console for record. And I was in tank number five, so my name is Philip Kindred, and there's no dad on me, which is awesome. So now, just to finish out, I'll climb out the window. You decide to go outside and see if you can figure out where you are. Avoiding the broken glass, you step out. You step onto the sill and outside, rustling some plants that have grown wild in the area. It's cool outside and damp, probably morning. The distant report of a gun catches your attention. You cock your head, listening, but it's over as quickly as it started. Obviously, you're not alone here, though that doesn't necessarily comfort you. All right, uh, you're in the parking lot of the facility, but everything looks the season despair. Plants have pushed their way through the pavement. Worst of all, nothing looks familiar. You don't remember the place or even who you are. Frustration mounts, but you catch it and put it in check. Might as well take a look around. Alright, so this is pretty much the movement screen you're going to go through. It's like on hexagonal tiles. And if you want, you can use W, A, S, and D to move around like that. And you just left click on a tile to move in a tile. And we just moved into this little city, town looking thing. As you approach the town, there is no sign of activity. Buildings stand in ruins and are overturned and blackened by fire. Explosion marks radiate outwards from walls and pavement. In the distance, strange looking creatures circle in the sky like monstrous leathery vultures. The world has drastically changed from what you knew. Some sort of cataclysm has befallen Earth, returning mankind to the Dark Ages. And along with it, your hopes of finding a warm meal and some answers. You decide to look around and scavenge what you can from the ruins. Alright, so the game has a really nice, cool atmosphere that I like. And um, on these tiles, there's going to be two little pictures. If there is, there's going to be this little box and this little magnifying glass. This box <coughs> means that there is items on the ground. And to find out what items are on the ground, you just 
press Q on your keyboard and you get to see the items. Now you can carry anything you want in your two hands. Um, so if you don't have any storage starting out, which is which most likely the point, if you want to keep something, you just need to put it in your hands. Now I'm going to go ahead and scavenge to scavenge. You can uh, just click on scavenge or press E. Every, every one of these has a hotkey, I'm pretty sure, or most of them do at least. Alright, storage sheds. I usually find more stuff out of storage sheds than I do out of houses, so I'll search the storage shed first. Now, whenever you go to uh, to loot something, you're going to have three of these little bars. Loot, safety, and sneak. Loot is the possibility of finding loot. It's usually very low unless you're at like an abandoned house or certain areas. Uh, safety, because you're liable to fall, break a leg, or get stabbed or something. And sneak is your likeliness to attract, you know, outside attention. So, it's not a lot, but it's still worth checking. And hey, look, found some. Awesome. Blue jeans. And... And binoculars. Okay, I'll take care of those. Half a pair of binoculars. Alright. So just put them in my hand. I'll put the shards in my water bottle. That'll do me for now. Alright, now I'm going to keep scavenging until I scavenge everything, because it's always worth it. Useful items. So it's not always a win-win situation, but it's still worth it to uh, search. Now whenever you run out of move points, uh, you're going to want to click enter. You can also do that by pressing spacebar. And don't want to fight this dog, so I'm going to go the other way. Use something here, there's water. You can just right click on water and then uh, use. And I'm going to show you guys why I clicked bot. Uh, you chose bot. You left click, or er, actually, wait, yeah, I can do it here. You just click scavenge. And you go to the stretch of forest, confirm. And then you can choose one of your skills like you did in the beginning. You choose botany, it'll make the loot chance go up. And also, this also tells you what's edible and what's not. Now I got three of these edible mushrooms, and even though they look the same, this one's edible and this one's not. So having botany will tell you that. If you don't have botany, it'll just tell you, hey, here's a mushroom. Alright, let's keep going. Now moving on and out of forest is going to take more move points than moving across flatland. scavenge some more here. Uh, these crumbling stuff is more uh, it's, it's more unsafe to search than anything else. Got nice, I found some stuff. This isn't real cool stuff. I already have a shirt on, but it allows you to wear two shirts. And the cool thing about these plastic bags is they actually work as backpacks. And I'll just put that in there. don't really need it, but I will. I like to keep two extra pants, because if you look at the condition, they will corrode over time. Oh yeah, 9.9. .9. What is that? A cigarette lighter. That'll come in handy for starting fires later. And... Hmm. Don't really need binoculars. Or at least I don't know, how, don't know what to do with them yet. Alright, I'll just leave. I'll keep scav... Maybe I'll find a backpack. Yeah, this crumbled off is building out of the way. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, you can use different items and it'll make your safety, sneak, and loot go up or down. I've never found a lighter before, but apparently this makes everything go up. Except for sneak, which is awesome. And then, the scavenger's crowbar, that makes your loot go up and your safety go down. So let's see if I can find anything. No useful items found. Alright, now we'll scavenge them. Oh, that was, that was unlucky. Now you can see down here, player's nose and throat are irritated, causing discomfort, uh, like an allergy. I uh, don't know why that is, possibly because I accidentally ate one of the bad mushrooms. I'm pretty sure I didn't, but there's random things that can get you sick on here. I found some more. Don't need it right now. Uh, uh, 
not too much. I'm gonna keep these dirty rags if you can, because even though they're not as good as clean rags, uh, they're better than nothing. Because if not, uh, if you get a wound, it's just gonna fester and get infected and you'll die. But now you can see I don't have a lot of inventory space left. So what I can do here is I can go to this crafting screen, and now all I have to do is left click on something, or drag it either way to here, and I can make you know certain things. And I'm just gonna tear these blue jeans into um, that. I don't have to move left to craft, so I gotta intern real quick. Alright, now I can craft. Yeah. See? Small cap. That you can't move, so it just goes on the ground. And then you can also put uh, your skills on here, and, and sometimes they do different things. I haven't found anything yet, but uh, apparently you can make different things from that. Nope. All right. So yeah, just confirm, make the rags. Got a stack of tin. Go back, and now I'm going to keep these. Now. Keep a string that can be used to make a sling later on. Hopefully, I won't need to. But all right, guys, let's scavenge. Some nice a hoodie. Nice, found a jacket. That's going to help a lot with the hypothermia. Shift noise trap. You could set these up um, to um, to like warn you if somebody's coming when you're sleeping. Ooh, r bullet rounds. These are real expensive. Um, of course, you're not going to get any money for them yet. But later on in the game, you'll see. I don't want to ruin anything. There'll be like a trading kind of thing going on. There's a shack in here, so I'm gonna scavenge the these that I have found. Shacks in the have the most loot, or at least the ones I have found. See, yeah, definitely. Found clean rag. It's actually pretty useful. Nice, found a uh, small animal hide. Don't know how, what to make with those yet, but I assume you can make a uh, some type of vest or something. And then a backpack, thank God. I'm just real quick gonna put that in there. With that in my hand, I'll put this on my back. The only thing I hate about this particular uh, sleeping bag is that it takes up so much space. And there are other smaller sleeping bags that are a lot better than this one that don't take up space. And also some more bullets, that's awesome. It's gonna take up everything. Hmm. This is gonna be a problem. Well, actually, yeah, I'll put it here, my jacket. Hopefully I'll be able to find a smaller backpack sooner or later, or a smaller sleeping bag. Now see, this is a locked storage shed. If, if you didn't have this crowbar, you won't be able to get in. And makeshift sack. Um, these are bags, or pretty much shopping bags, but they can't be used as backpacks, like the shopping bags can. So I guess we'll transfer everything over. aggravating. I'll show you another cool thing. If you move everything over, if you right click on it and empty out, it'll take everything out of that bag. 
Now I'm going to put the disposable plastic bag back in because every now and then your stuff will break, especially with the condition they're in right now. As a matter of fact, I'll just do this. I keep taking these lights, but I'm going to. And I'll just leave everything else. Alright. See if this dog comes over here. Try to try to get some combat if I can. Full of jelly bears. Ha, <laughs> never found those before. Obviously, food. Alright, so now it's getting night time. Uh, what I like to do is whenever it starts getting night, I always like to find a city. You watch three enclavers climb down in a sewer manhole, one by one. One climb out, and each is visibly distressed before entering. There are two left now, and they're agitated. You peer down into the sewer. Three enclavers who climbed out are lying at the bottom of the ladder, unconscious or worse. Your nose wrinkles in disgust. Rotten egg smell. Well, that's not good. Hmm, let's see. Tell them that they'll be okay if they move fast, and don't take their packs. Just stand by and keep a lookout. Gas dissipating and to try in a few minutes. It's the remaining endeavors to slide the manhole, cover back in place. Their friends are gone. Destined. Take a long, deep breath and climb down. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I've actually ran into this encounter before. No, let's be a bit evil this time. Taking your word on the gas and grateful that you prepared to help. The enclavers slide down the ladder to rescue their friends. You watch them die. It's so easy you almost feel giddy. Their packs are heavy, but you drag them off into a nearby building so you can loot them in safety. You pick the wrong building, though. A couple of rubble, sc rubble scum come boiling out of a supply room. Just as you enter, rushing you with crowbars raised, it's all you can do to drop the pack and run. Even that's not quick enough. You take a hit as you leave. It aches, but you've got to keep moving. As you can see, you could be a little evil bastard on it. It sucks that they get to keep their stuff, but... Let's see, my right leg's bruised now, so if you come down here to this medical, you can uh, fix it up. I don't think I can do anything with the first. Yeah, I can, I'll just put a bandage over that real quick. Also, one thing I forgot to show you guys is if you put a clean rag on your face, you'll have some sort of like a gas mask kind of. Um, just to help you out there. Let's scavenge this place. Rifle scope. Now I have a rifle. Oh, here we go. Pharaoh sleeping bag. Thank God. This thing is so much easier and better than that. Thing. And I think it's more expensive. Yeah, it's a lot more expensive. Oh, um, let's see. Don't really need anything else. But I'll take this scope. And I'll take these pants because they have more um, condition on them. You know, yeah, let's take these in I can see anything. I'm gonna go back into town and set up camp for the night. Alright, now set up camp, it's kinda weird. You gotta take your backpack and drop it on the ground first, right? Then after that you go to this camp menu and then you have your available campsites. An abandoned IT office. So and the selected one is 
an abandoned IT office, which is good. Keeps you out of the rain. So I'm going to drag and drop this uh, sleeping bag in two here. And it's going to let me sleep in there without, you know, getting rain on me. And then to sleep, I just press the As night falls, you notice there is a bright glow coming from the east, easily seen through the treetops. It's no guarantee, but it could be could be a sign of civilization, maybe even a lead of who you are, or, or excuse me, of where you are, or who. And if nothing else, it's as good as a landmark to strike towards as any. Press mini map or the M key to see its location on the map. Now, in my opinion, this is where the game gets really interesting. Now, if you see, it says glow back here on on uh, part of the map. And all the way over here, there's something, not going to say what, because I want you guys to find out for yourself, that really progresses the story and really makes this game worthwhile and makes it more than just another survival game. Because although it has great survival elements, a great crafting system, one of the best I've ever seen, of course it's a little short for wear on graphics and whatnot, but if you're a true gamer, you can get over that. And just the storyline is amazing. And it's a roguelike, so if you die, you're done. But that just makes you want to make the right decisions and survive for that much longer. Alright guys, well, I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, comment on it, subscribe, and, uh, you know, give it a like. Uh, all feedback is appreciated, and I'll see you guys again. Peace out.